so welcome to Sensible Secondhand Reviews, although as you can see I'm not wearing my corduroy jacket because this car is not very sensible at all. This is a 2009 Mazda RX-8 R3 and yes, it's a lot of fun but because of the reputation of these cars, perhaps we can't be as sensible shall we say is going to buy a 2012 Kia Pro Seed or something like that. It's a bit of a different uh, kind of thing. These cars were launched in the UK in 2003 and I'm very happy today that I've finally been able to meet up with Yosef from Ashraf on Cars who owns this wonderful beast. And we finally managed to get together and do this review, which has been on the cars for some time. So the RX-8 was unfortunately discontinued for our market in about 2010. And this R3 model is the final iteration of the RX-8 for our market. It's got a six-speed manual gearbox and develops, in this particular application, about 230 horsepower. Sometimes there are different figures quoted, but it's about 230 in this car. This is the six-port um, engine. There was also a four-port engine until uh, the facelift, which occurred in 2008, and that developed about 189 horsepower. There was actually an automatic version available, and I think um, with the four-port engine, with, with, with 189, that it also came with a five-speed manual, not a six-speed manual, at various points. The steering is sublime. It's absolutely wonderful. Rear-wheel drive balance at its best. And I've heard you can get the tail out of on these rather easily. And in fact, Mr. Ashraf has got the tail out of one of these on the video on his channel, and I will link to in the description below. So prices of these, of these cars are mainly within the sensible second-hand reviews remit, so they are between about £1,000 and £5,000. For an exceptional model, you might pay six to seven. Uh, something like this, it, it, it's pretty near the top, I would say. It might even actually be more than 5000 for one of these. But yes, we only cover really cars that you can buy between one and 5000 and um, yeah, this fits the bill at the moment. RX-7s, any type of RX-7, there were various generations of course of those made. Um, they are very much out of sensible second-hand reviews money now, so it, this is um, an affordable car. Whether it's a sensible car or not, I think we'll uh, you know, go for a review and uh, sort of see whether or not it is. The side of by the road um, it's a little bit busier than I thought it would be but it does give us a chance to have a look at this car which is just a remarkable remarkable piece of design this is the latest version we have we got in Europe the R3 actually wasn't um, joined by any other model in the range after 2008 uh, until 2010 they just sold this one which you know effectively is is the facelift that they got. Um, there's uh, Joseph in the background. Hello, sir. Um, this car has actually been in the family for a little while. Um, the trade plate in the front is because um, it's going up for sale quite soon, and uh, Joseph's father has a has a dealership, um, so it's just a little bit cheaper to, to uh, not pay the tax for like a month or something whilst it's um, whilst it's up for sale. That's why the trade plate's in it. 19 inch wheels on an R3 and uh, no badging to say it is an R3 I presume because it's the only model they sold at the time they didn't need any badging so if we think it's open so we get inside yeah you can tell it's an R3 because it actually tells you it is on the mat and then RX-8 logo here as well I would stick my secret mission documents in the glove box but we've already got a lot of stuff in there 
one of the things straight away that marks it off from any other coupe on the market, with the exception of a Hyundai Veloster, which wasn't sold at the same time as this, is uh, all the rear doors. Yosef and I were discussing this earlier, but there is absolutely no way, no way at all, that if you close this door from the inside, I'm not going to get in the back because I can't be bothered really today, um, you, you, you can't close the front doors. It's, it's just not... It's just not possible. So you're going to have to rely upon others driving to get you, get you in and out, really, um, if you're doing that. The gear lever is absolutely tiny. It is similar to sort of MX, uh, MX-5 gearbox. I don't know if it is actually an MX-5 gearbox or not. It might actually be different. Um, obviously, both cars are rear-wheel drive. One thing I noticed as well is we've got some very large cup holders in the middle. Obviously, that's sort of American market stuff. The dashboard's typical Mazda of the mid-2000s. The sort of Mazda 3 and things looks a bit similar to this in the Mazda 6. I recognise these door pulls and switches from somewhere as well. We have actually got a bit of soft touch material on top of there. Uh, dual front and uh, side airbags, of course. You're going to need them in a car like this. And Recaro seats as well. Let's go on the other side. Wow, it does, it does look just remarkably aggressive. Very, very aggressive indeed. You don't really want that coming up behind you because you are going to get swallowed up and overtaken. Mirrors are interesting as well. Be really careful of this because we're actually over a puddle, so I'm going to have to be very careful. Right, I hope I don't drop my, my wire from my microphone. Oh, oh here, we, here we go. Oh my gosh. That's not the easiest to get in and out, particularly if you're of the uh, less than portly, less than uh, slight disposition. That's not the easiest thing to get in and out of. It's very, very, very low driving position. It's like driving a racing car or something. I suppose that's the idea. Handbrake is uh, unusual in one of in one of these as well. It sort of reminds me of I don't know a grab handle. Climate control, of course, in these. Automatic lights, automatic wipers, and uh, lots of steering wheel controls, cruise control, of course. Trying to get sort of 25 miles per gallon out of one of these, though, is quite difficult. So, it's one of the ways you can try doing it. Cigarette lighter is down there, but it doesn't seem to be a USB port around here. Is there an aux in here? There is, it was retrofitted. Okay, retrofitted aux in. But yeah, they uh, just fill this gear lever. Ma Mazda, obviously well known for lovely gearboxes. I had a, a Mazda years ago and it was a nice gearbox. Yeah, that feels good. That feels very good. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yes, absolutely lovely. Right, just hold a second whilst I get the key out of my pocket. One thing I quite like about this car, and it's something that's shared with... Uh, my old Mazda 323F that I had years ago is the illuminated key ring. They both have those. Down here there's a switch for turning the traction control off, although I'm not going to be doing that today because I might actually die if I do that. So we won't do that, viewers. We will just uh, turn the key very carefully and see things spring into life. There we go. Yes. You could tell the purpose of this car straight away because the rev count is in the middle like a Porsche. Uh, speedometer is rather small and digital only, that's interesting. Mileage is quite low, it's done less than 55,000 miles this car. That display at the top of there is very, very sort of reminiscent of um, other Mazda models of the time, Mazda 3, Mazda 6, that sort of thing. It's very easy to use though, it's, it's, not, it's not, not at all sort of difficult or anything. Let's make sure we turn that volume off because we don't want any copyright claims on this channel. Yes, I, I just, I just really love this. Uh, I love this steering wheel. It's really thin. It reminds me of a much older car. A couple of other cars that uh, that Joseph has are from the uh, sort of late through the early seventies, and both of them have lovely, lovely thin steering wheels. So maybe that's uh, maybe that's why they bought one of these in the first place. Bose uh, audio system in this. Let's pull the door a little bit shut. There we go. Door cards are sort of interesting. I mean, you actually get some sort of um, 
some kind of textured, which I think it's slightly soft as well. Nice sort of, sort of fabric on here, and then a bit of leather. Only two electric windows, the rear ones are not electric, they sort of pop out as well. And there's the electric mirror switch. Sort of eyeball style air vents as well. The overall driving position is very, very low in this car. It, it's, it, it certainly feels very purposeful. And uh, yes, it very supportive seats as well, although, yeah. I think I have to visit the gym a bit in order to fit in these seats properly. Okay, apparently I can open this by using this bit on the key. Yes, excellent. Boot is about, I think, about 280 litres. It's about the same as sort of a Vauxhall Corsa at the time or something like that. Got this big sort of step down here though, and the shape is a bit strange, although that is a ski hatch, so you could pass things through there. Um, if you need it to go soaring down in the south of France or something like that. And of course you've got a little master cover for the oil, which you will be needing because the, the rotary engines do use a bit more oil than a standard piston one. And you need to make sure you check that quite frequently, of course. Because this is a, an R3, we get this uh, sort of spoiler on the back as well. And rear visibility, I notice, isn't great, so I'm very grateful this car's actually got parking sensors on it. Excellent. Well, let's have a look at this uh, Renesis 2 engine. So here we have the famous Renesis or uh, Vankel rotary engine. I think up until the present day, uh, and uh, the Mazda MX-30, which I, I think is going to come with a range extender, which might be a Vankel, this is the last car that came with a Vankel engine. Nominally 1.3 litres in capacity, but it's not the same as a piston engine anyway. Uh, there's not an awful lot to see under here. Uh, it looks just like any other sort of modern car does. These develop about 230 horsepower. It really depends on the year and the market and things like that. Um, there was a lower power version with uh, four ports as opposed to six ports like this. With the R3 and the other face of the cars around the world, because it was sold until 2012 in some markets, our market till 2010 because of Euro 5 emissions it wouldn't meet. It, this is called the Renesis 2 engine and it is an improved version, however it still has um, problems, shall we say. Um, and sometimes rebuilding the cost of the engine, which uh, you have to tell us is about £2,500 on one of these, is more than the cost of a lot of these. Now this is a, a later car, so it is worth a fair bit more than that. So if that were to happen to us, it would be worth doing it. And I'm sure like an RX-7, which is just crazy money these days for an RX-7, um, these will increase in value. But at the moment they are very affordable and that's why we're covering it on sensible second-hand reviews. viewers this car's actually got a bit of a rev counter that tells you when you can rev above 9000 rpm uh, i'm not quite there yet because i you know i'm driving moderately like we normally do on this channel but wow this steering wheel is just perfect for flicking this around corners and i think it's an electric setup or ele electro hydraulic setup in this car it's not a fully hydraulic power steering system but i mean you you wouldn't know that because it feels brilliant you've got to be careful that you don't get bogged down with a lack of torque because this engine's really not got that much torque at all it thrives on the high revs and on the older rx7 there was a warning buzzer which told you you know, to change up. Let's see if we can... Oh! It just... It's not like any other engine I think I've ever experienced. We're still not exceeding the speed limit here. We are being respectful of the limits, but... Now we've got onto the roads a little bit smoother. 
it's possible to exploit this chassis a bit better. And this being an R3 model, it's got a, a foam filled cross member, it's got different suspension from the earlier cars, and it feels glorious. Just even the noise of the engine is, is fantastic. Brakes, exceptionally good. Gus has told me that he um, uses this car on track days. Excuse me, I'm just, uh, yes, we'll have a bit more of that noise, please. That's uh, very good. <laughs> the main problem is, though, but we, have, we haven't got a lot of headroom in here. I'm, I'm not particularly tall. I'm shorter than your surface, and I'm sort of struggling a bit here even for the headroom. I mean, you know, we're not talking about, you know, within the seat here. But, you know, maybe later we might talk about that, but just the headroom is, is not great. But, oh my gosh! <laughs> Yes, please. That is fantastic. Uh, yeah. What a shame I've got to give this go and give this car back now. Well, viewers, <laughs> the Mazda RX-8. What a car. What a car. Let's uh, just go over some trim levels uh, briefly. Now... This car's not actually badged as an R3, I think, because it was the only type sold in Britain after the middle of 2008. It's, it comes up on, I think, a lot of sort of, um, you know, sort of check sites of things. This is a standard RX, RX-8, and that's how a lot of them were sold. But there was a special edition. There was the PZ, which is a bit more aggressive like this one. The Evolve, the Kuro, which I think means black in Japanese. Uh, the Nemesis, that was a was UK um, market-only car. And uh, then the uh, 40th anniversary, and of course this one. This really isn't a car that you could possibly even consider wearing this corduroy jacket in. So that's why we haven't been wearing it today. It's not a sensible car. Is it a great car? Well, I think it is. These cars are really cheap. I mean, the sort of no budget reviews days of these is coming to an end now but they are just a fundamentally wonderful car yes like a kv6 engine rover there are one or two things you've got to be aware of but it's just joyous really i'm so grateful to yosef for giving me the opportunity to uh actually drive his car that he's that he has family have had for a few years and who knows Maybe one of you will uh, own it one day as well. So thank you ever so much indeed um, for watching this episode of Sensible Secondhand Reviews. Thank you again to Yosef from uh, Ashraf on Cars for supplying the, the uh, Arox set for review today. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications. Um, the social media links are in the description below. Thank you. Oh